Sagittarius here, right on time. What does a forgiveness mean to you? It means ease, taking us out of disease. And uh, Carrie Ford is here. Good morning, Carrie. Hi, David. How are you? I am fantastic. It must be my coaching day, and so many amazing transformational coaches coming on the show today. Um, you're really elevating people's emotional intelligence uh and uh you know intuition is part of intelligence inspiration is part of intelligence and when we aggregate all three together our intelligence our intuition uh and that emotion we, we get this emotional intelligence the energy of it um how do you clearly define you know elevating people's emotional intelligence especially for women Mm, the ability to navigate resilience and challenge with more agility and fluidity in the nervous system. So less reactivity in terms of decision making, less reactivity and, you know, going into that overwhelm when things are just, when shit's not going right, quite yeah. frankly. So yeah. there's an agility there. And in that agility, I like to break things into a simplistic form. One of those simple philosophies are, can we identify ease and dis-ease? And can we feel I am at ease? What am I doing to put me at dis-ease? What are some of the more common things for women that put them at dis-ease? Ooh, man. I think if we're operating out of alignment with our life purpose and really not showing up with the God-given gifts that we have, that that is for sure a way to, to start showing up in kind of this separation of self, right? Thinking we need to do what, what, what we should do, think that, thinking that we have to operate a certain way, but really it's just out of alignment with who we really are. And so I think that's where a lot of the disease shows up because it causes anxiety and stress because on some level, we know if we're really being honest with ourselves, we're out of alignment. And you talk about at some level, um, and it's really important because I'm a mama's boy, so my mom is everything to me. Uh, I'm, as my daughters say, I'm sus, or I think that's the word they use, uh, meaning that I'm completely whipped over my wife. She's my everything. And I have three daughters um, as well. And understanding, and it, it came to me the other day when someone told me something that blew my mind away. I, I constantly know there's a lot that I need to unlearn because of my genetic, energetic, and experiential inheritance. In 1974, I was already alive. That's how old I am. But uh, I was all, already a young boy. In 1974, that was the first year that women were allowed to have credit cards. Um, and a lot of people, it's not that long ago. I was alive, right? And, and it blows my mind. And then that leads me to say, you know, women must have a lot of energetic and genetic experiential inheritance that put them at disease, And not only do men need to unlearn this so that we provide more equity and inclusion and opportunity for my wonderful mom, my wonderful daughter, and my gorgeous wife, but women themselves have to understand the energetic, genetic, and experiential inheritance. What are some of those things that you see across the board with women that they've inherited that at, it's a causal relationship to, you know, this elevated emotional intelligence. Mm, money mindset or lack thereof. Yeah. Uh, not really knowing how to, um, not even the conversation around charging what they're worth. I think that's a different conversation because there's a lot of that that goes on in the world, like charge what you're worth. And it's like, well, do your skills match what you're saying you want to charge too, right? That That's important and in integrity, obviously. But um, money, you know, what do I do now that I'm making money? That This was part of my evolution too. Like now that I'm making money, what do I do with all of this? How do I invest it? How do I have money work for me? How do I really understand the system? When I wasn't part of the system, you know, for so long, you talk about being pushed out, right? And in 1974 being approved for credit cards for the first time, like that really was not long ago. Right. So thank you. Money, <laughs> huge. And then also yeah. how to deal with motherhood, to be present in motherhood, and then to also have big dreams and goals. And what does that look and feel like in your life and in your body and in the way that you purpose yourself? 
And do you think, um, and I love freedom as choices, options, opportunities, it touches a favor. One of the things that I see for my own daughters is I wouldn't want them to be afraid to say in a certain period of my life, all I want to do is raise my children as my primary purpose. I, I want I, I want them to have that option or opportunity and not to feel diminished uh, from that cultural, societal, experiential inheritance of, hey, we have to be CEOs of Fortune 100 companies or, or have a different purpose other than one that maybe biochemically and bioanatomically uh, for a period of time uh, is, is innate in our emotional intelligence. How do you equate uh, a woman who uh, goes counter uh, the American dream and says, no, you know, my primary person, I want to raise my children. Then I'll decide a bigger dream uh, because that's my biggest dream is to leave a legacy of these beautiful children who are empowered. I mean, that is the generation that outlives us. That is the mark on the earth when we're long gone from it. And I do think that our children can be our legacy. Again, giving them the power of choice. <laughs> they may You're not right. want responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Projecting all of our life's dreams and everything that we, you know, need to be important about us in them. They may not want that. Um, and I think that's an important conversation that you bring up. Um, so I, I think the answer is just, you know, having that open communication, giving them the power of choice, but also understanding that your life's mission can be whatever you want it to be. Some women are called to do that. I'm, I'm not. Like, I believe that my children are my legacy, but I also am other than mom. I'm a businesswoman. I'm a, a world changer. I want to shake some shit up. I want to change the face of leadership. I want to get in at a systemic level and change the way that we do school systems because I don't think that that has enough emotional intelligence. We aren't equipping our teachers with how to handle all the many shades of children and the emotional variety that comes with that. So, um, you know, I have some big goals and I don't think it takes anything away from the kids. Right, but I also don't think it, it. Me being a mom takes anything away from my my other legacy. In addition to them, my mission, my movement. So true. Last question, real quick, before we ring on the incredible Jen Dolly. Oh, uh, awesome. Femi <laughs> yeah, feminine energy. Uh, when we talk about emotion, yeah. uh, energy, emotion, mm -hmm. that we've gone beyond uh, the human embodiment, the physicality of identification and uh, mm -hmm. I deal a lot in energy and feminine and masculine energy. Um, this equates to a, fe a feminine emotional intelligence, regardless of what our physical beings may represent. Um, do you believe in that same energetic identity beyond the physical one? Absolutely. And this has been crucial for me in mastering leadership as a woman. We create and have the ability to create the, the world with our body. We have a womb, we birth children. How can our body not be part of the equation in terms of leadership? The heart as our compass, using our energetics and our innate wisdom and our divine consciousness on a cellular level in terms of the feminine embodiment. That is the power. We need the masculine, the doing, the forwarding, the momenting, but we also need the feminine energy. Otherwise, one without the other is incomplete. The feminine energy, though, is so much of what women don't know. Women know how to be like men or how to be liked by men. We don't know how to tap into our body and use that as the vehicle for transformation by being the lighthouse itself. And I liken this to being a river, right? The feminine energy is the water, but it's still in a directional flow. The masculine energy is the banks of the river. Without the banks, we're just a puddle. But without the water inside the banks, we're just mud just dirt. We need both. So the direction and the flow and really understanding the energetics of both. And I learned a lot about energetics of polarity and masculine feminine energy from David Data, who's a brilliant, he's a brilliant way of, of talking about this in his book, The Way of the Superior Man. It's probably my number one most recommended book that I have my feminine, you know, leaders read and bring home to their husbands or their partner. Um, but yeah, I've, it's, this is power in the way that I know it in my body in a way that I never knew existed until I started doing this work. And I think every woman needs access to that. And you are giving that access, Carrie Ford, K-E-R-I, 
at I am Carrie Ford or elevate with Carrie.com. Thank you for all the great work that you do, making a great impact on my family and my life and my community. We appreciate you. Please come back again. Absolutely. Thank you, David. The world needs more of you. Thank you.